you're in the US right now um, and mm. you shuttle in between. Um, what's that experience like? So you shuttle between the US and Nigeria. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Tough. I have four children and okay. a wife that live here. Okay. And they're actually knocking right now. I'm about to do my Nigerian dad thing. I'm busy. Come back. <laughs> I'm not going to edit that part out, by the way. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> so, any, anyhow, so um, on the um, on the the traveling, it's it's kind of brutal sometimes. It's a 12 hour flight. Usually if I take a direct flight from Delta Lagos to Atlanta, or Lagos to JFK is 11 and a half hours or 10 hours. So uh, I try to do it uh, quite often because, you know, my, my children are growing, so they kind of need me to be around and present. And I've made that active decision that I would have to shuffle back and forth. And luckily for me, I have phenomenal partner, you know, inside Bakari, who holds down the fort. You know, he, he runs the day-to-day the -day operations. You know, he's pretty much you know, the boots on the ground. Like he, he's a, he's a trustworthy guy, you know, he's a brother. And without that, I probably wouldn't be able to stay away as long. You know, sometimes I come two, three weeks. There's a last year, there's a, like now, I'm probably gonna stay a month. And I can do that Gee, because of tech, yeah. of my competent, you know, right hand, my right hand man who is there. But um, that's another thing that, you know, individuals that plan on coming back or if you have a family, because I, it's hard to transition and move your entire family. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend that either, but you just have to find the balance. But it, it's not an easy thing at all. I won't lie to you. It's mm -hmm. uh, mentally and physically exhausting sometimes. Mm -hmm. The time and trying to, to be a dad via FaceTime or via Zoom, you know what I mean? And to, to be like, right, make sure you do your own work. You know, and my, my boy, my young boy, Ferrum, he's getting older, he's six. And he realized like, yeah, I'm not going to get a spanking. You're not going to be back for two more weeks. <laughs> you know, <laughs> starting to be so sharp. He knows like, oh, okay, uh, you're in Nigeria. I'll see you in two weeks, you know? And so coming back and forth is, is difficult. If I had my way, I would definitely be full-time in Nigeria as much as possible. But I think I compensate, I, I make that up in and being present when I'm there. And same as here, when I'm home, I'm, I'm home, I'm present. I try not to, I have to switch off. And then when I'm at, in the office, I'm in the office. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm on the staff, like, hey, how's everything going, you know? And I'm in tune, you know? Uh, but it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to, to be right. quite honest. Right, right. One of those that it's for the greater good. It's better to do it now and get it established and then, you know, as things really grow and as things become bigger and the way that we're trying to set it up, it, it will run itself. You know what I mean? Like, I think gone are the days where you have to be so in control and hands on on every aspect. Don't get me wrong. Like, you can't just be lackadaisical and just, oh, I hope everything is going to go good. No, mm -hmm. no, you have to mm -hmm. on the proper infrastructure. But I think that we live in a day and age where you know you can see things i got the cctv app on my phone like i can see somebody right now you know what are you doing uh, you should be working and they can mm -hmm. hear the voice mm. so it was like Ooh. You know, for a couple of local security guys that we had they were like oh, it's spiritual <laughs> you know they thought it was spiritual <laughs> like the voice of god yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but um you know it's 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 one of those things where you just have to make a conscious decision if you have a double life like i do there's no way around it. You, you're just gonna have to uh, to go. And those those for the, for those listening that are young and ambitious and want to go in, you know, this is the time. If you haven't yet started a family, if it's just you, you know, then go ahead. But then, um, if you have already started a family, this is a decision that uh, you're gonna have to make. You know, you can raise a family in Africa. It's, I mean, people are doing it all the time. You know, and you can build a life there. It's it's uh, probably gonna be a great opportunity for your children. You know, but for me, they were so entrenched and so involved with activities here to remove them from that wouldn't be fair. You know, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be right. Now, if they weren't involved in all the activities, gymnastics, soccer and taekwondo and have all these basketball teams and soccer teams that they were already used to, you can't just pull them out and say, oh, yeah, yeah come to Nigeria. You know what I mean? But uh, for one of my younger ones, uh, I, I've already turned into my parents. I, I threaten them all the time. 
Like, <laughs> hey, if you do, stop me back. When I'm going back, you're going with me. <laughs> yeah. so oh, that, that's, that's awesome. Always, yeah, great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's a really good point because I think the transition looks different for everyone depending on your circumstances and what choices you make. So people shouldn't feel like they have to be boxed into, you know, a certain way of being involved or like building a business or building a career in Africa. It it really is a very personal decision and it's about what what works for you. I think that that I'll leave on that note. I think mm. what I would in a, a gym, you know, uh, obviously depending on what your faith is but you have to be the one to write your story don't ever let anyone be the one to write your story for you and your story will change there's different phases in life so there's different times so like you said your transition from Philly back to Kenya my transition from uh Atlanta Georgia to Lagos it it didn't look the same and it doesn't mean that it will look the same for someone else you know we are ultimately in control of what our story and narrative should be Mm-hmm. You know, and regardless of how rocky your start may have been, you know, you can still change the ending. The ending doesn't have to be as rocky as as it is, you know. And I think that a lot of times, especially younger people, they feel like they have to do it a certain way. They 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 feel like they have to follow right. a certain path. But no, like because I didn't follow a path. I I created my own. I trailblazed. You know, and 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 I think that that's important that the younger ones coming up behind us create your own path. You know what I mean? Like now there's certain elements that you can take from someone else's path. You know, there's certain nav- navigational compass like okay, oh okay, he went this way. I'm going to go this way, but I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go here and then I'm going to this. So, but I I think that's that's really important that we as individuals are the ones writing our own stories. Don't let someone write a story for you like okay, come and work for me and then do this for 25 years and then retire. <laughs> you know? No. On days, like you can, you can go somewhere and just do two years, and then do another two years somewhere else, and another two years, and don't worry about the perception of what other people think. As long as you are, you know, fulfilling your desire, mm. and you're making an impact all along the way, mm-hmm. I think that that when the story is written, it makes more sense. Like wow, because now you've you've touched so many different lives in so many different aspects, and I think that that's something that. You know, a lot of people sometimes are afraid to do. You know, because yeah. when I first quit, body was like, "Ah, are you mad? You are leaving? <laughs> oh, what? you want to you do ditched, us? You've ditched Focus. the gravy train." <laughs> yeah. You know, and you know, it was hard. It was hard leaving. Uh, was hard in the beginning, but you know, you 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 stick with your guns. You know, and and it'll work out if you're dedicated. You're committed. Things things definitely work out and fall in place. You just yeah. have to be consistent. <laughs> you reminded me a good friend of mine. We were chatting about how um, our parents, you know, when we are like, oh, we want to move back, and obviously, like the Kenya they left was very was challenging, different. lots of political upheaval, and like you were only someone that mattered if you worked for a bank. <laughs> Mm. And so here we are coming we're like working for startups and so they're like gay 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 SMEs SMEs <laughs> <laughs> You've studied all this in America SMEs you've got to work for SMEs and I was like oh my god that's so true you know yeah. but if if you want to be at the forefront of innovation um you know and you want to do entrepreneurial stuff it's actually one of the best um ways to come back um Yeah so yeah. so being true in spite of those societal expectations um being true to yourself and going for opportunities that are aligned with what you want to do I think is also really important so thanks for sharing that um no Okay um I guess we can wrap it up here thank you so much Adela this was awesome I don't think I've laughed I- as much in a <laughs> podcast recording um um I- Yeah and thank you for the advice um it was honestly spot on and I'm sure it's going to help someone who is maybe on the path so. of making a transition um yeah, yeah. and yeah. so I'm really appreciative of your time I'm going to let you go back to your family No nah, uh, no problem <laughs> <laughs> And thank you so much for doing this um and I'm looking forward yeah. to staying in touch I can't wait to see all that you do yeah. I'll I'll leave you with another little quick gem like I think that you know your energy is amazing you know we met in Dubai at the conference mm-hmm. and 
even this podcast, what you're doing, reaching out. I think you're doing a lot of good stuff. For those of you that watch her, she was a panelist, you know, on an all male forum. You know, she was one of the only women. I was really, really impressed by how she represented Kenya. So uh, Jeff Kaningi, if you're out there, if you if you see this, you need to look up with Rose. You know, she's she's definitely doing good things. That's my good buddy, Jeff Kaningi. I look for him. <laughs> I look for him. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you remember. So if you don't remember me, it was uh, Avec Jimmy. So then he'll, he'll <laughs> more than me. But um, I just think it's important seeing seeing podcasts like yours and seeing people like you that are representing and carrying yourself the way you do. And I, I just wanted to give you your flowers while you oh, can still smell you. them. Like I think you're doing, job. and uh, you know, keep up the good work. Keep up uh, all the stuff that you're doing. I think that you're also an inspiration for young Kenyan women and for African women in general and for young African men as well. Just mm. the fact that, you know, you're out here on it. You know, I like to see this, you know, and iron sharpens iron. And, you know, I get this energy from you. I'm like, yo, yo, your Rose is doing her thing. Let's keep yeah. doing this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, salute to you. Salute right. to you and all everybody in Kenya. All right. Badai. But I thank you so much, my brother. Deola, oh, take care of yourself yes. and talk to you, you soon. All, All right. right. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Yeah.